in this video we will do some point wise discussion on one and half breaker scheme those points are listed here one and half breaker scheme is actually one kind of bus arrangement like one main one transfer scheme or two main bus one transfer bus scheme in one and half breaker scheme there are three number of circuit breakers used for two number of feeder now why it is called one and half breaker scheme this scheme is called one and half breaker scheme because there are three number of circuit breakers for two numbers of feeder this is a simple substation bus arrangement where there is two number of main bus and four number of lines or four number of feeders and for each set of two lines or each set of two number of feeders there are three number of circuit breakers so for each line or each feeder 3 by 2 or one and half numbers of circuit breakers are allotted that is why it is called as one and half breaker scheme but is there one and half or 1.5 numbers of circuit breaker possible in reality actually one and half number of cbs is not possible but economically it is possible actually we are expanding cost of one and half number of circuit breakers per feeder now what is diagonal or dia in one and half breaker scheme two lines form one set or two lines are paired together to form one diagonal in each diagonal there are several equipments like circuit breaker, CT, isolators. In each diagonal or dia, there are three numbers of circuit breaker and six numbers of CTs are used per diagonal. Now what is tie breaker? This breaker is called tie breaker and this tie breaker is used to couple bus 1 and bus 2 or this tie breaker can also be used to divert load of any line during fault occurred in the concerned circuit breaker. Suppose this is line 1 and this line 1 is fitted through this circuit breaker. Due to occurrence of any fault in this circuit breaker, load of this line will be diverted through this tie circuit breaker. But one point to be noted here that to feed line 1 and line 2 all of these three breakers will be closed. Similarly to feed line 3 and line 4 all of these three breakers will be closed simultaneously. But why all three breakers are closed simultaneously to feed power to two number of feeders to feed load of line 1 it is not mandatory to close this tie circuit breaker load of line 1 can be catered through this circuit breaker and line of load 2 can be catered through this circuit breaker so it is not mandatory to close this tie circuit breaker always to feed line 1 and line 2 but it is recommended to close tie circuit breaker always when both line 1 and line 2 are in operation. This is to increase reliability of the system because if any fault occurs in bus 1 or bus 2 then suppose fault occurs in bus 1 then to clear that fault in bus 1 all circuit breakers connected with bus 1 like this one and this one will be tripped by operation of bus zone protection relay. In that case due to tripping of this circuit breaker this line cannot take power through bus 1 and as this tie breaker is closed so load of this line 1 will automatically diverted to bus 2. So load of line 1 and line 2 both will be feed it through bus 2. 
during occurrence of any fault in bus 1. Similarly, if any fault occurs in bus 2, then all circuit breakers connected with bus 2 will trip to clear fault in bus 2. But in that case also, there will be no power interruption in line 2 or line 4 because load of line 2 and line 4 will be automatically diverted to bus 1 through tie circuit breaker. Now why 6 number of CTs are used to feed 2 number of feeders? There are 6 number of CTs placed at 6 separate locations, each have individual functions like CT1 and CT4 are used for bus zone protection, though CT1 is used for bus zone protection of bus 1 and CT4 is used for bus zone protection of bus 2. CT5 is used for distance and directional overcurrent earth fault protection of line 1, whereas CT6 is used for distance and directional overcurrent earth fault protection of line 2. CT2 and 3 are used for T differential protection. Though for T protection, one core is also taken from CT1 as well as CT4. CT1 is also responsible for LBB protection of bus 1, whereas CT4 is also responsible for LBB protection of bus 2. Now, this LBB is for this tie breaker. During failure of tie circuit breaker, this tie LBB comes into picture. But why distance protection is taken from line side CT? Distance protection is connected with line side CT or CT5 in this case. But why line side CT is used? To understand, we will take a simple example. Suppose a fault occurs in line 1 and magnitude of the fault current is 10 kilo ampere. As this line is connected with both bus 1 and bus 2 due to closing of this tie breaker. So, this fault current will be equally divided between bus 1 and bus 2. So, this city will see 5 kilo ampere current and this city will also see 5 kilo ampere current. So, for occurrence of fault at this point, both CT1 and CT4 will see fault current. And if we connect distance protection of line 1 with CT1 as well as distance protection of line 2 with CT4, instead of connecting distance protection with CT5 for line 1 and CT6 for line 2. Then both of the distance protection connected with line 1 and line 2 will issue trip. As a result, both this and this circuit breaker will trip resulting outage of line 1 and line 2 for occurrence of any fault at this point. That is why we connect distance protection with line side CT. In our case, distance protection of line 1 is connected with CT5 and distance protection of line 2 is connected with CT6. So, due to occurrence of fault at this point, distance protection which is connected with CT5 will issue a trip to this breaker and this fault will be cleared. But as this fault is not sensed by CT6, so distance protection of line 2 which is connected with CT6 will not issue a trip. So line 2 will remain in service. Now what is trip protection and why separate LBB protection is required for each diagonal? We will discuss those in our next video. For more update like this, stay tuned by subscribing this channel and don't forget the bell icon.